It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, in, on the corner of 5th and William. I, I, I was going to try to do this as a more a more of an old-timey radio announcer thing, like broadcasting to you live from the... the Coming to you live <laughs> from the Ann Arbor <laughs> Bump. From District the, Library. <laughs> from the Ann Arbor District Library, Netcast Studio, Ballroom, <laughs> in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, comics.aadl.org. This is the show where we talk about comics, uh, comics lifestyle, making comics, writing comics, thinking about comics, anything that goes into this. You can uh, even read comics. You could even read comics. Anything that goes into this medium that we love so much. And we've got a big round table today and a big, exciting uh, topic for discussion. This is going to be a philosophical one because we have, returning to the show... After, uh, I think the last time you were on was episode 50, Brandon. Is that right? Yeah, it's been just a little while. Yeah, so Brandon Dayton of BrandonDayton.com is on the show. And we've got him over the cell phone because just before we started recording, uh, some guys with tractors came through your yard and tore up all the wires. Uh, I think it has something to do with the Vogons coming, doesn't it? So you've yeah, got to build like bypasses. That, yeah. <laughs> But Brandon Dayton of BrandonDayton.com, uh, always always a, uh, a fun philosophical voice to uh, match wits with. You're one of my favorite sparring partners in the whole world, Brandon. I'm so glad to have you back. Uh, and then we have returning to the show David Carter of the University of Michigan of the Art and Architecture Library. Art, Architecture, and Engineering Library. Engineering Library, right. yes. Uh, the, oh, wait. It's only about those engineers. <laughs> They have the power to yeah. wipe you off the face. <laughs> yeah, they will. They will undesign stuff all around you, <laughs> just like Tron. You'll just see me slowly getting erased, and it, they'll be like, "Who did it? An engineer? That's all." Uh, but yes, uh, the dude, the Duderstadt. Indeed. Yes, um, and also of oh gosh, I have your Earl right here. Um, well, you could tell me yet another comics blog. Yet another comics blog at blogspot.com. Dot com, and then Dave yeah. reads comics on the Twitters, and right. you were you were on a while back too, talking about mini comics day, not too long ago. Yeah, it was a couple months ago, I think. Which ties in nicely because Brandon started out with a mini comic. Did Brandon? Did you start out with a mini comic? Well, that's how he refers to it on his site. Oh. I did, yes. I mean, yeah, Green Monk is just basically a mini comic. Oh, okay. Well, but it, but it's a graphic novel now. I mean, you won the Elsa. Uh, best comics for teens uh, award, right? It's it's been called by many, many names, you know. So <laughs> I'm I'm cool with whatever <laughs> people like to call it. Just let me have my Segway jersey. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to not get to you, Paul. <laughs> Uh, Thrust Perry. Uh, anyway, uh, so yes, Paul Story of Storyville.com. We didn't give you a proper uh, shout out I, last time I, you were on. And actually, I noticed that uh, I, I noticed I'm not at all, despite my sidekickery status, not at all in the uh, opening uh, montage. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> uh, I think I made that montage before we explored that idea of having you on as a sidekick. Ah, Even okay. Robin so, gets to be on the cover occasionally. That's yeah. true. I mean, can, couldn't I be jumping through a hoop? Through a something? hoop with paper <laughs> in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait you, you keep on this exercise regimen and we'll talk about that. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get you a kid devil outfit there and you can go. do a reprise of uh, that issue of Blue Devil. Uh, but yes, Paul Story of Storyville.com, writer of many comics. Right. Uh, yes. You you uh, wrote the Gotham Girl stuff and uh, and and most recently the um, the pick your own path through through a story of twisted journeys uh, peril at Summerlin Park, otherwise known as choose your own adventure. So if but, you say but, so, <laughs> but we don't call it. <laughs> that. I don't call it that. We don't talk <laughs> about that. Uh, so okay, uh, we've got introductions aside. Brandon, you pitched the topic for this one, and I think it's a good one. And I'm wondering if you could give us a little background on what you were thinking when you thought about talking about this whole idea of writing for young people, but with a new look at it. Yeah, sure. It's, it's kind of this concept that that I think I first really saw mentioned by. Um, gosh, now I can't even think of his name. Uh, the, the Pixar guy, right? Ed Catmull. I, I heard a solo video with him when he talked about this idea of you know. You you write you know they write for children but you know children live in the adult world and I've since seen that um, kind of repeated in other places. Um, there's a documentary you can find on Hulu that's about the, the life of uh, Bernie Sendak, where he kind of uh, comments on that same idea about. Hey Brandon. You know, Hey, Brandon, yeah. I'm wondering if you could uh, possibly look for, I don't know how many bars you're getting on your phone, but if you could possibly look for a better location because you're coming in kind of fuzzy, and we lost a lot of that when you were talking. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. 
Either that or you could try what most people do on the streets is just shout really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Into the phone. Well, shout real loud. Ah. <laughs> but well, yes. I'm going to walk around and I'll probably get worse parts. You just kind of tell me if I, if I sound any better. It's a little bit better, but yeah, you, you try to speak loudly too, and hopefully that'll cut through the, 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 you know, the cell phone interference. But you were talking about Maurice, okay. Maurice Sendak, yeah. and then uh, it was Ed Catmull, I think you said, uh, who was doing a yes, talk. Yes, Ed Catmull. And it was this idea of, uh, I think I, I heard about, the, I, I didn't get to watch the Maurice Sendak video that you linked me to because it was on Hulu Plus and I don't have a Hulu Plus account. But, um, uh-huh. wah, wah, wah. yeah, but, but I mean, I heard about a lot of the, the talking he was doing uh, towards the end of his life about, you know, it's like we don't need to protect children from adult concerns, right? And we can address uh-huh. adult, uh, I, I can't think of any other word than concerns, yeah. right? You don't want to say adult topics. Situa- yeah, adult topics, uh, sophisticated topics. We don't need to protect kids from that in uh, literature for young people, right? Is that essentially what you were driving at? Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Um, and I, I try to put my finger on, you know, what that means. And it, I think what it doesn't mean is, is, and I think what everyone's very used to, is the idea of ex- uh, protecting children from kind of explicit material, right? You know, the, the sex, the drugs, the, the violence, gore, things like that. We're all pretty used to that idea. Um, and I think it has more to do with kind of, kind of a way of looking at the world that you don't have to protect children from the idea that, I guess, sad things happen in the real world, I, you know, to, to say it very simply. So, yeah, so I, I saw Sendak, I think, on Colbert Report, where he was talking about, you know, how... You know, it's sort of like death and things like this where we shy away, you know, from, you know, you, these days people tend to, to shy away from things where, you know, you might, you, where you might get the, give the kid the impression that everything isn't all sunshine and lollipops, mm-hmm. which like what kid actually thinks that life is sunshine and lollipops? You ever been on a playground? Right? Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's <what> I like. <laughs> oh, yes, I have. We all make comics. We all have similar experiences yeah. on playgrounds. Or we, we love comics, right? Yeah. And, that, and that, that comes with a lot of baggage on a playground, yes. right? <laughs> We've eaten a lot of gravel, let's just say that. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but, yeah, but I, I want to hear from you on this, Paul, because, I mean, you wrote uh, some issues of Justice League Unlimited. Yep. And you wrote Gotham Girls, which were all Bat- l- so large. Batman Beyond. And Batman Beyond, all based on the kids' shows. And I'm sure that you were encouraged to adhere to the broadcast standards and practices that the shows adhere to, yes? Um, well, actually, I, I, not so much encouraged, but it, it was sort of an, un, it, an understanding mm-hmm. that, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, kind of keep it. I think it's funny because a lot of times the shows actually dealt with things uh, more sophisticated um, emotional topics than the comics did. Not always. I mean, don't. I'm not taking taking shots at the comics. I think that there was some really fantastic um, stuff done for the DC animated kids line. Mm-hmm. But there, you know, it was almost. For example, when I wrote uh, Justice League Unlo- Unlimited number twenty, and and actually the, my Batman Beyond issue too. Tell your parents, kids. I, I had, like, a little kind of, you know, grace note at the end where, you know, the, oh, well, kind of the lesson of this story was. And um, and I was sort of encouraged to do that. Um, I don't know how the, whether that was a standard thing or whether it was just because I was doing a fill-in issue or whatever. But they, they kind of made it seem like they wanted, like, a little kind of nice little encapsulation yeah. Sort of the Aesop's fable. Jerry Springer's final thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Highly appropriate for your children. <laughs> yes. But um but yeah, I mean, but there was there there was a certain amount of you know, you're not you don't deal with a lot of really heavy topics. What like I said though, on I I find on the animated shows they actually sometimes deal with those more directly than than you're allowed to even in kids com- in comics aimed at kids. Mm-hmm. So well, I mean, and, and Brandon did this wonderful thing where he broke down into these two categories that I'm hoping we can dig into in a minute. Uh, but I mean, yeah, this is this is something that we're seeing more and more of. You I mean you look at some, stuff like uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. I know you want to talk about that, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> or, or The Legend of Korra. Yeah, don't get me started. Yeah, the Legend. You've been watching Legend of Korra, right? I have. Yes. Are you all caught up? Yeah, yes, well, I've got, I've got to catch it. I got to watch episode eight, I think, so that's out now, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's on at nick.com, actually. Uh, you guys watching it? No? Yeah? I, I, I've, watch it right I've seen that. the first two <laughs> episodes, I think. I haven't haven't been able to keep up. Oh, it. there's some dark stuff in this series, and it's on Nickelodeon, for crying out loud, right? Uh, and even in the original series, there's blood bending, where waterbenders can bend your blood to ma- manipulate you like a puppet, you know, very dark stuff, right? Uh, so, yeah. yeah, this is a show where, like, some really heavy-duty stuff is explored. Uh, it's the heavy things are intimated, like, like the, in the first series. Spoilers, everybody. Don't listen for about 30 seconds. They intimate that Fire Lord Oz- Ozai may have murdered his wife, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. So... So yeah, so uh, I'm wondering. I'm wondering what we'll do is okay. So uh, Eric, Eric Closter in the chat has to go pretty soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and announce the contest right now. And this is this is gonna be like a here's the tease coming up next. Brandon Dayton's gonna give us two categories with which we can uh, investigate the idea of writing for young people. But first, before we go into that, this is where we do like commercial break. Uh, I hold in my hand right here. Can What's we put it? it under the? Uh... Well, it's kind of shiny. Okay. Uh, I, I'm worried about reflection. All on right. It. Well then, but carry I'll, on. I'll Sorry. do it like this, and I'll just go like this. Here we go. Uh, but I'm holding in my hand uh, uh, the box to a copy of Manga Studio EX4, and uh, I want I want to throw out a quick disclaimer. I'm not getting any money for this. This uh, I already bought the software, and I wouldn't do this contest or giveaway if I didn't think the software was pretty cool. Uh, and I've been posting images online of some of the digital inking I've been doing in Manga Studio. You can go to it at my blog. At I'm, I'm assuming, by the way, that being on the show means I'm ineligible for winning that copy. That is exactly correct. Nobody who I'm talking to right now with voice can get this. Uh, but but you can, the listeners, <laughs> sorry, the viewers out there, I've got a free copy to give away to all the folks who turned out for the live show today, and this is how you participate. Just like when we did the last giveaway with uh, Reina's uh, galley of drama, if you go to Twitter right now and use the hashtag, uh, where is the hashtag? Let me see if I can find it. I wrote it down here. Oh, do a tweet on uh, Twitter uh, with the hashtag uh, CAG Manga Studio. Comics are great, Manga Studio. CAG Manga Studio. And, you know, maybe point people back here at the feed, or you could also point them at uh, comicsaregreat.com slash manga studio EX. Uh, and that will take them to where they can purchase it for themselves if they want to purchase it. And then we're going to, by the end of the show today, we're going to randomly select one person f- who uh, tweets with that hashtag to receive this. I will send, uh, I'll get in touch with you, and then I'll send you instructions on how to get your copy. Uh, this is not an inexpensive piece of software. No, so. no. And it, it should be noted that despite the name, you can draw American comics American with com- it, too. American <laughs> comics! <laughs> 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 I just thought I'd mention. It. I know it's it's shocking. Well, you do know that manga just means comics, right? Yeah. But it automatically <laughs> inserts big eyes. In yeah. <laughs> Speed no, lines no. just show up on every page. I don't know what's going on. It saves so much time when you're cross-hatching. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, anyway, so everybody go to Twitter's right now and uh, uh, use the hashtag CAG Manga Studio, and uh, Eric Closter will randomly select one of you guys by uh, two twenty. It's a hashtag bash. It's a hashtag bash, and uh, and th- and th- I want to thank Smith Micro for providing me with the free software. They approached me about it, and that was pretty cool. So, okay, Brandon, let's get back to talking about storytelling, shall we? Let's do it. All right, you got you got uh, you you came up with this idea of. Uh, the Childish World, and what was the other one? I, I, I would just call it the the Adult World. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was I kind of as as a side note, kind of just thought of them as the Disney World and the Pixar World, which isn't isn't completely fair because, you know, the more I thought about it, there's there's plenty of uh, Disney narratives that that fall into to both modes. But um, anyway. Uh, you may have to help me out just a little bit without the internet. I don't. Oh, I don't you don't have your notes, notes like I did before. Yeah. Okay. But I, yeah. Go ahead. Do go your ahead. best, and I'll and I'll jump in if you if uh, with, with, I'll fill in the gaps. Okay. So yeah, the childish mode is is more of this idea of it's it's kind of this presenting a world that's safe and, and protected. Um, you know, some of the elements of this are, you know, the 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 details really don't change. So if you think about like a lot of Saturday morning cartoons. You know that that people don't really really change. People don't get older. Scooby Doo. Um, yeah, like Scooby Doo. Um, there's there's they're they're cyclical in the sense that any any choices that are made are resolved and and things return back to the same way. You know, at, at the end of the episode, so you never have any any consequences that, that are permanent. Um, uh, one of the other elements of it is that it's it's uh, the world is just. So it's not only how people deal with one another, but basically 
you know, good things happen to good people and, and, and bad things happen to bad people, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, one of the, one of the interesting things about this is, uh, you know, even reading Brothers Grimm, I kind of realized that even though Brothers Grimm is kind of harsh in, in some of its details, it, it fits this model, you know, some of these old Brothers Grimm story tells, you know, the good guys always, always get what they deserve. The bad guys always get what they deserve. Anytime something bad happens to the good guys, they get blinded, they get their hands cut off, they magically get them back at the end of the stories. So that's kind of the first mode, the child, the, I guess the childish mode. Um, and uh, the second the second one is, is kind of the more of the adult or, or the, the Pixar uh, model. And I guess I'd call it that because, you know, Ed Catmull is the one that kind of made a point of it. And it's just, uh, it's kind of showing uh, the consequences of re- living in a real world. So rather than, than being a static world, it's a, it's a dynamic world. Um, and rather than being cyclical, it's, it's linear. So when you make a choice, it has a permanent consequence, and that co- consequence will stay with, with the character throughout the, the duration of the story. Um, it's an amoral world. Things may happen um, to bad people. For, for no other reason than, than random chance and or good and bad people. Um, and it's up to the people within the world to, um, to kind of make the choices about right and wrong and how they choose to live. Um, and kind of the two examples I like to kind of illustrate this are, you know, you look at Pinocchio. Pinocchio is a story of, of a, basically a toy, a puppet that wants to be a real boy, has this fantasy of being a real boy. And at the end of the story, his, his fantasy is granted. He gets what he wants for being good, and he becomes a real toy. Um, uh, you know, as opposed to that, you have something like Toy Story that's about a toy, like a Buzz Lightyear that has this desire to be, well, believes he is an actual space ranger. And the narrative isn't about him becoming, uh, magically becoming a real space ranger in the end. It's about him accepting that he's just a toy, but then also learning to, to find good and kind of the limitations of, of his life. So that kind of sums it up. Uh, um, you know, it's a lot about kind of showing limitations, but then kind of putting it in the court of the characters to say, well, the world isn't perfect. The world isn't, isn't everything you wanted, but you still kind of have the power to, to do good things within those limitations. I'm also noticing that when you talk about the adult world model, these tend to be, at least the examples I think of, tend to be... Uh, Linear stories with a real beginning, middle, and end. It's not something that you can serialize as an ongoing thing forever and ever. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, well, it, true, but the, um, it's harder. As uh, as Brandon was saying, like even the old, see a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the old one uh, old stories and and the kind of new versions of them. There's a lot of sort of. It's not entirely true, but they're cautionary tales. They're 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 teaching tales. Uh, are you trying, talking about the childish model or the, the childish model? Okay. The childish model is to try and get children to learn certain things, mm-hmm. like um, you know, uh, uh, treat people well, and you know, um, it, 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 in, in other words, it's it, they're trying to kind of instruct in a way, um, and in uh, you know. Um, but not remember. not in the PSA model kind of thing of like oh you weren't wearing reflectors on your bike I almost hit you with my car now I know you yeah know? it's not like well, that but, but but in a way it actually almost is the childish model it almost is is they 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 kind of usually have the protagonist making some bad decisions mm-hmm. and going astray like Pinocchio mm-hmm. and then oh wait now I realize that that's a that's not what I should have done. So now you make some good decisions and you get back to, and then you get rewarded for the good decisions. It's, it's a way of, uh, Bruno Bettelheim had a, had a whole, you know, his entire book, um, shoot, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the names, the importance of, uh, something of enchantment. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you, uh, I know the book. I know the book. Yeah, so I, let me look it up real quick. But but that was very much sort of saying that a lot of these these stories, even even with the horrific elements, uses were, of enchantment, uses of enchantment, were to try and kind of instill cultural value, mm-hmm. and we're still trying to do that. I think we're just a little we we've kind of homogenized even you know more you know so the 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 cultural values and whatever, you know, we don't have, the, the, the stories don't have such horrific consequence before they turn back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I, and I think that's I think that's a really good point you make about that those stories are much more about what kind of what a community believes is right or wrong. You know, mm. it's like here's what we believe is right or wrong, and they kind of create a world based on that. You know, and I I think I guess I guess the other the adult model is more about like here's how the world is regardless of, of what you believe. You know, yeah, a lot of those old uh, uh, you know Grimm's tales are really about kind of saying, these are our values. You treat a kindly old man kindly and, and he will turn into a, a, a god and, and give you a, a kingdom. You treat him badly and, you know, you're going to have some sort of terrible, ghastly punishment. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the whole kissing the frog thing. Hmm. You know, princess... The, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with yeah, the story. But yeah. it's, it's just this idea that, you know, you're kind to the ugly. Yeah, you're, you're kind to yeah. The, the, yeah. the weird thing and then yeah. good things will come out of right, that. Right, right. Uh, well, Dave Roman's in the chat. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm just always happy to hear from Dave. And I I wanted to give a shout out to something he and I are working on anyway. Um, but uh, he says that, that, that he wishes there was a better term than childish, th- since for many people that's a derogatory. Hate when people say adult equals good versus childish equals dumbed down. I want to address this. I think this is really interesting. And I want to and I want to also throw this into the into the mix. Is Dan Mishkin who I talked with on uh, oh gosh I've had this discussion with him before in some other place. He was on episode one of Comics Are Great. Um, but he, he's often said that the great thing about superheroes is he sees them, and they should have hired him to do the Amethyst book. That I'm, I'm sticking to it. Uh, <laughs> is uh, that superheroes are uh, role playing and play acting for adulthood, right? It, it's dress rehearsal for adulthood. And, and the, the really good superheroes present us with all the problems. Here's the stuff you're going to encounter when you start getting into high school and people start acting weird. Uh, and here's, here's, this, here's a bunch of different kinds of heroes. Here's Spider Man, here's Iron Man, here's Captain America, who all have their own way of dealing with it. You get to choose what vector sounds best to you based on their experiences, right? And isn't that what this quote unquote childish, maybe we can find a better word? I would Is like it? idealized. Idealized. Yeah. Because it's an idealized or, or, world. That that as as you said, Brandon, that you know, the world itself it has got a, a perspective of of, you know, rewarding the good and punishing the bad and so Yeah, well, I'm not totally happy with the, the term childish either because I don't think that, that sums it up because of course I think what we're what we're saying here is many many children's stories do not fall into that category and but yeah, I think there's there's an idealization to it. I think you know maybe something about safety. It's 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 a, a safe mode, a protective mode of storytelling, um, uh, and it's it's. I think it's very much about fantasy as well. It's about creating a world that is that is enjoyable to go into. Which I think another note we should make is that the this mode isn't necessarily a, a bad mode. I mean, I think it can be uh, in some situations, but there are appropriate places for this type of story. Help. Well, as as can the Pixar model, I mean, I, or the adult world, as you say it, because, I mean, how useful is it to an eight-year-old to say, you can't fight City Hall kids, so don't even try, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to the real world, kid, as, as, as my dear old <laughs> mother used to say to me, whenever something bad would happen. Uh, you know, that that's not necessarily useful to a kid, right? Both yeah. both can be abused, right? And well, Dave, you looked like you were going to say something, no? I, I might have been, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> well, 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 unfortunately... Me, along that point, uh, oh. I, I would want to mention, I think I think one film that falls into that, the Pixar mode really well, is, I'm thinking about is Breaking on Fireflies, which is not the really explicit content in there. Brandon, we're, Brandon, we're losing you again. Okay. Um, but you were talking about Grave, yeah. Grave of the Fireflies. Oh. Yes, just because I think it's a good example of, of kind of going maybe uh, an example where that mode would be inappropriate, even though it, it isn't it doesn't have explicit content in it. The the kind of the truth it shows is so heavy that I, I wouldn't want a young person to see it. I wouldn't want someone you know maybe past the age of, of twelve to really see that movie, just because of how heavy it is. Have you guys watched in, it? In the sense I've of not seen it the what the world is. So I've seen Grave of the Fireflies, and uh, I couldn't make it all the way through. I mean, it was so emotionally heavy that I just I I wanted to take a nap. I was so worn out from from how grim that film was. Yeah. So yeah, that is certainly something. Like you you look at the cover and you see like oh Studio Ghibli, uh, but it, it is certainly not for an eight year old. Yeah. There's no. Well, question. that's some of the, that's one of the things is some of the uh, adult or, or or mature or whatever. Um, can can veer into the grim or the bleak, 
you know, or yes. or write in, you know, and some of it even, you know, people thinking that they're making a more emotionally complex story end up actually just making it um, kind of uh, cynical mm -hmm. rather than, you know, rather than it just being um, emotionally true, you know, rather than just, say, dealing with a, a an uncomfortable emotional truth. It it just kind of goes like oh everything's crap, you <laughs> right. know. Yeah. And then th yeah. again, that's the kind of thing that that's not helping. Well, I, I'd I'd argue it doesn't doesn't do much beyond for for adults or kids. <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, actually, depending yeah. on your viewpoint, I mean, if if Alice Hunt were here, we might hear something entirely different. <laughs> well, yes, but we'd have to bleep it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Need to get I back mean, her back on the show, but. I I think that would bring up a really good point that this is this type of, of idea too is is really it's a it's a moral idea. Like it's, like when you say I'm gonna tell a story in this way or this way, it's you're kind of making a moral stand and saying, This is how I believe the world is. And in that sense it's it's gonna be kind of subjective to the storyteller to say, like, hey, this is how I believe reality is and it's to all the viewers to agree you know, to whatever extent they believe that, that that view is accurate, you know, and and a storyteller may have a very pessimistic view of the world, you know, and that's the moral position they are taking. But then uh, another storyteller may say, yes, you know, people die, and when you make decisions, they're final. But you know, take in, comfort in, in this. All that, yeah, you can still do good things. Yeah, right, right. Well, although, although I, there's also plenty of instances where storytellers tell stories that are outside of their personal moral view. <laughs> yeah. Um, Examples? Sure. Um, well, just, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think that everybody who ever told a, you know, upbeat superhero story necessarily, um, necessarily ha believed that the world is a shiny, happy place. Matt, I'm taking the mouse back because I lost Brandon. I'm going to try to get him back. All right. Oh. Did you, maybe you ran out of Skype credit. No, he's still got. I got. I still got thirteen dollars in there. Okay. So, <laughs> I want to address a few. Oh. Hey, Brandon. I'm. I'm sorry. Whatever I said that made you hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want to get some. Uh, it, it, some points from Dave Roman in the chat here. He says uh, a show like SpongeBob isn't childish to be safe, right? Uh, it's it's childish to be funny, you know. And and is it, is it childish or is it whimsical? Uh, and, and at times I would call it. Have, have you watched it? Yeah, I've seen some. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so at times I would I would call it outright childish. There's there's its its share of really really gross humor. Uh, when when SpongeBob contracts some kind of skin <laughs> disease that turns everybody all all puffy and green and disgusting, and that that's just pure fifth grade, you know, garbage pail kids gross out humor in, yeah. in those. Um, but then you know he also adds, but some stories exist just to entertain. I don't think the writers of Fairly, Fairly Odd Parents are making any moral stands, right? Sometimes it's just you're just saying, "Let's make a fun story," right? So yeah. Sometimes yeah. you're 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 saying, "Hey, you know, my for example, my own personal view may be that you know things are pretty grim in this world, but you know, entertainment can uplift. You know, Adam's pro family provide a a, a, a you know a, a, a balm for a temp for a time. <laughs> you, you laugh will. to stop the tears. Is that yeah, what you're saying? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so that I may not cry. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but you know, that's I, I mean, that's a that's also people do that where they aren't necessarily upbeat or um, uh, idealistic or whatever, but they they'll write stories like that to you know kind of give people a boost. Mm. And um, yeah, and sometimes that's you know. If if you will, it's it's sort of the uh, it's it's self medicating. If you know, <laughs> yeah. Every story doesn't need to be an existential journey. I mean, I think I'd I'd agree with with Dave Roman that you know there is a place for you know SpongeBob that fits in that mode or, or Simpsons, you know, mm -hmm. which I think both of those to a sense are also kind of like uh, very self aware and and ironic in the sense that they're aware of the format that has preceded them. You know, there's a little bit of a, a parody that goes on with that. But in the same way, yes, they they fall into that format of being being safe in the sense that you aren't watching that, knowing that you're dealing with with any grim realities. It is about you know entertainment and maybe a, a little bit of parody. 
I, I would think, I, I, is it fair to say, guys, that this whole idea of being something being good for children is potentially uh, a misleading term? It, it trips us up into thinking that we're somehow always in some position where we have to instruct. When, when I say good for kids, I just mean not harmful, right? Mm. Not damaging to kids. Or, or even just enjoyable. Right. You enjoyable know, to kids. Um, yeah. and, and, and I think that sometimes, uh, if you will, I, I think sometimes darker elements can still be a part of an enjoyable overall experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I haven't seen Up, but I know enough about it to know that it is just emotionally devastating. Have you seen it, Dave? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, the, that, you know. that first intro to Up is just... I, you know, I don't know if that has the same effect on a kid that it does on an adult. Well, that's that's possible too. Sure. Yeah, I, but but you still, even though there's that immense sadness, right. it's you're not telling me that kids didn't go like, "Well, up was great," <laughs> right. right? Yeah, or or the graveyard book, Neil Gaiman's mm. book, which o- opens with the brutal murder of the kid's parents. You know, and um, and it's the book for kids won the um the whatever ALA award. Oh, the, the not the Caldecott, the Newberry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a librarian. <laughs> Cartoonist got that one, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, and, and goes from and that's yeah, in like the first four pages. This sort of yeah. happens. The kids' parents die. Well, you know, although the kids' parents die is sort of you know how many stories start. Oh with, yeah, start with that. That is a that's a that, that's such that's a your trope. Harry Potter, your yeah. Batman, your your all that the, kind of the, stuff. The uh, the idea of the 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 orphan hero right right yeah. is just uh it's it's an icon- iconic thing and and interestingly despite a lot of these stories being kind of as as uh, Brandon calls them you know the safe mode stories you almost like you take away that comfort zone at the beginning mm-hmm. but then it's still you know even despite that the 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 protector not being there you know it still goes well you, you know, this, this, this reminds me that, Brandon, I need to get you back on in the future, and we need to get a uh, child development psychologist on, and also I would love to get Eric Rabkin of the University of Michigan well, yeah, on. He'll have a lot to say about myth and yeah. fables and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> which which I want to I wanna just real quick do a quick segue, just that like, uh, this, or not segue, but just like an interstitial here with uh, a really cool thing about Ann Arbor that, that I just, oh, God, I love this town. Uh, so uh, my wife recently pointed me at, um, oh, where is it? Oh, Coursera. So the University of Michigan's offering free online courses now, which are have you played around with the software? It's actually magnificent. I've not had a chance to look at it yet, but, but I've, heard it, good, I've heard good stuff about it. It's so. it's beautiful software, and Eric Rabkin is actually teaching a course. I'll put it in the show notes. It's uh it's science fiction, uh, fantasy, and science fiction: the human mind, our modern world, with Eric Rabkin. And yeah, I, I might sign up for it because it, it looks like a really great class. But yeah, we need to get him on the show to talk about this kind of stuff because I'm sure yeah he could talk our ears off about this kind of stuff. And and I think it kind of comes back to this idea of it's. Like it's not about protecting kids. I think even in in the um, you know the what did you call it the idealized model? Mm-hmm. Even that's not about protecting kids. It's about delivering the information in a way that is uh, understandable to them. Kids can grasp death. You know, it's like I grew up in a rural area in the country, and I I had I don't know how many dogs because they kept getting killed right by like people driving too fast and whatever because we didn't have a fence and stuff. So I was familiar with the idea that things die, but you know. Is it something where, how, how are you going to deliver the ideas that it is uh, commensurate with what the kid's understanding yeah. of the concept is, right? Perhaps simplified versus nuanced. Maybe. Yeah. Although, Maybe. although again, that I don't think it's what Brandon was getting at with the, the idea of the, the kind of the comfort or safety zone, but I, which I think is uh, a good thing to keep in mind, especially for modern, you know, modern storytelling. We've gotten more and more and more into this idea of, you know, bubble wrapping the kids, yeah, right. In and, in the narrative, and so much of that is uh, a marketing thing, where you're actually selling the kids' entertainment to the parents, and so you want the parents to feel good about what they're seeing, and not good necessarily point. the kids. It's the parents who buy yeah. the movie tickets, who buy the DVDs, right. who buy the books, um, except for television, where the kids are probably putting it on themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, give me something that I don't have to talk about with my right. kid afterwards, right. for God's sake. And in television, <laughs> in television's case, you're actually selling it to the advertisers. You're not actually selling it to the kids. Which, and and, and again, though, you're you know the advertisers like, oh, well, we don't want to run the risk of of this anybody. offending somebody. So that yeah, so right. there's there's a very you know let's kind of bland it down. Um, you know, it's uh, we don't we don't want the food to be too spicy. 
Right. You know, because it might upset somebody's stomach. So we'll just kind of, like, there's just a hint of, of some sort of flavor to our pablum. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Sketch is saying in the chat, I, I'm going to destroy you, in quotes, as opposed to I'm going to kill you. Which, yeah, in the 80s cartoons that I grew up on, it was always, I'm going to destroy them. Destroy our enemies. And I knew what they <laughs> meant, right? I didn't have to hear the word kill, but I knew what was really Oh, I always thought that they, they meant, you know, emotionally devastating. <laughs> 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 like, like what happened to me on the pro- playground. <laughs> That's what Megatron meant. He said, instill the Autobots with a crippling sadness. <laughs> <laughs> and fill them with all we, and then we will run roughshod over this planet. They, while they're while they're going, oh, that was mean. I mean, one of us should stop them. Oh, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I want to I want to get at another topic that, that or a, a way of looking at this that Brandon kind of gave us was uh, you were talking about how both of these uh, different models, if you look at them in adult stories, there's examples of the idealized world you you used uh was it Bruckheimer you were using as an example of that yeah that's the first thing that jumped to mind but i i see that all the time just in like in, in kind of without you know a cheesy action film or or commando whatever it may be where you get kind of this idealized world where everything is is you know safe um but they make it quote-unquote adult by just with the explicit content so mm-hmm. you may have you know we're bad language and, and the sex and the violence and stuff, but really it's presenting a little bit different than, than the Smurfs, you know? And, and as far as, as far as the consequences for, for people's actions and, and, uh, and just kind of the realities around people. So, you know, you can, you can have the explicit stuff and have, and have, you know, this more, uh, adult world as well. You look at something like George R. R. Martin, that's that's very much that type of a narrative with with Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's I think there's there's mixtures of those things, and you know I even think that there's we're talking about a, a, probably a spectrum here when you talk about this kind of safe or idealized mode versus kind of the the adult world mode. There's a spectrum there as far as as how much of this stuff you show and and how much how much you don't show, you know. Right. I, I'm reminded of, and I know I've talked about this example on the show before, I, and I use it in my classes all the time, is that uh, Alfred Hitchcock quote where he says, you know, you see the guy walking down the street, three-piece suit, top hat, monocle, reading the Wall Street Journal up in front of his face, open manhole, falls in the manhole, and it's funny, because it's always funny to watch rich people get humiliated, and then you get inside the manhole, and he's got a bloody face, broken teeth, tear running down his cheek, now it's tragic, because you got up close to your subject, and you saw the, the, the that pain. Nope, pain still, is, still funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I, you're one of the 99 percent paul <laughs> depends on the person yeah it does depend on the person but but um I, but you it, mean you mean someone who's not emotionally stunted would have a <laughs> that reaction yeah, yeah i mean if we knew, if we really knew the true story of the cabbage seller right <laughs> <laughs> right right from from uh, uh avatar last airbender uh but but yeah yeah it's like uh when I think of the movie Commando, which I just mentioned a moment ago, it's like at no point in the film am I ever worried that Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to die, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the consequence yeah. of all of this action is, is not I- I necessary to enjoy the story. And, and I've sat down, I've told this before, I've, I've sat down with friends and actually watched that final scene where he infiltrates the bad guy's base. He kills over 90, 94, 95 people in that scene. And, you know, there's like a few <laughs> scratches on him. And, that's, and, that's, and, and, and all of the, the, the killings are very cartoony. It's like he throws a grenade and the guys fly in the air all A-team style, you know? Yeah. Like you don't see shrapnel penetrating bodies or anything, and like he he does bury a saw in a guy's head, but it's it's a split second of seeing that happen. Yeah. It's it's very very cartoony. But but you don't see that guy's widow and orphans right la- later on. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. fact that you've just destroyed a family ninety five <laughs> times. They're yeah. faceless bad guys, right? Well, I, I, you know it's interesting. I I I was uh, you were talking about not worrying about the uh, people dying, right? And um and I, I was suddenly reminded of Serenity, the Joss Whedon movie based on Firefly. Yeah. And how even after, even after Shepard Book, because, and I think it was because he had officially... Careful spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, don't listen if you, if you haven't seen it. Um, even, perhaps because he had left the, the crew officially... When he died, you were kind of like, oh. Yeah. And, and you figured that's the big death. That's a big, you right. you yeah. were certain everybody was safe. Right. Yep. And, and then they you weren't. found out 
oh no, this is much more nuanced. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when you're like, I think I think that's a really good point, and that's that's one thing I remember actually hearing Ed Catmull say in the same in the same video I watched. Is I think that Pixar not only the way they tell stories isn't just about a moral stance of saying, hey, this is we believe this is how the world is, but it's also a tool they use to to make their stories stronger. So, like, what you said, I think what you're both getting at is this idea of, of stakes, right? Mm. Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, you know he's not going to die, so you're not really worried about him. And you're not really worried about the people he's killing because they're just, they're just you know, cardboard cutouts. Um, and, you know, I think, I think Pixar uses this idea of, of kind of the limitations of the world and, and the ability of someone to die. Or in the case of a Firefly, like you said, the stakes are much higher because you know it's possible that people can die in this story. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's it's not just a moral issue, but it it is something that can lend to better storytelling if you show that hey, if you make the wrong decision in this world you're creating, it can lead to really disastrous res- results that can't be undone. Uh, Eric Kloster in the chat has to go soon, so I'm going to ask him now to randomly select one of the entries for the Manga Studio EX4. Uh, oh, Eric, you can stay as long as we need. Okay. Well, we're about. To, I was going to use this as a transition point because Sharon Iverson's coming in to do the book recommendation segment and talk a little bit about kids read comics. So while um, Eric, why don't you pick the winner while I say that Paul Story? Yes, you were to say. Oh, I I will be exiting, but I will be able to to hang out at, for the end of the show. Oh, okay, cool. But but yeah, but I wanted yeah. to also say that you're going to be at Kids Read Comics. I am going to be at Kids Read Comics. You're going to be on a writing panel. I am going to be on a writing panel with some really excellent writers. And me. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Worley of Scratch 9, Eisner-nominated Scratch 9. Yep. Dan Mishkin, creator of creator of Amethyst Princess of Gemworld. Co-creator. Gem Co-creator. With Gary he, Cohn. And, and, and Ernie Colon. That was really yep. the dream team that really made that book sing. And I don't know what you're doing, DC. But anyway, he's going to be there. And then Jim Adoviani of uh, uh, Feynman, for crying out loud. Yep. What a panel. What a panel. is going to be there at, at 826 Michigan uh, at Kids Read Comics this I'm year. There. So. I got my ticket. I'm ready to go. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, the, uh, learn how to write comics at Kids Read Comics. We're going to talk about that more in a minute. So, um, we'll, we'll probably discuss things about, like, you know, a, a, a simplified or childlike uh, perspective versus the uh, idea, uh, you know, the more idealized mu- nuance versus nuanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Brandon Dayton's going to be there, too. Brandon ah. Dayton's going to be appearing via Skype. Uh, and I guess we can announce this. This is a scoop, yes? Yeah, a right. Skype scoop? Are you scooping yourself? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> scooping my own thing, yeah. Uh, Brandon Dayton, I haven't put this on the schedule of events yet, but Brandon Dayton's going to be uh, part of a Skype panel of video game designers to do a talk on how to create a video game from concept to completion. Uh, and that's going to be moderated by Rob Stenzinger, who also is a video game uh uh, programmer uh, and designer, so that's that's going to be happening on the fourth floor here at the library. Uh, looking forward to that, Brandon. It's cool that you actually get to participate in the show, even though you can't actually be at the show. <laughs> I know technology is fantastic. <laughs> well, hopefully when, they it, get... when it works. <laughs> when yeah. it works, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> when, when it's not being dug up by backhoes in here. Yeah, as long as the cable guys don't show up the day of uh, Kids and Comics, we'll, we'll be up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, did you pick the winner? Oh, it looks like he did post it. So. Uh, Jason P., uh, I'm looking at the tweet right now. Jason P., Ultra Squid, you are the lucky recipient of Manga Studio EX4. Uh, <laughs> yep, you did win indeed. I'm looking at the tweet. So, um, yeah, if you want to uh, send me your email uh, address, and then uh, I can uh, y- you can send it to comicsaregreat at gmail.com, and I will get it, and I will send you instructions on how to claim your prize. Thank you to everybody who showed up in the chat to participate in this, and everybody who did all the tweets. That was a lot of tweets going on uh, with the hashtag. So uh, congratulations once again to Jason P., and uh, thanks, everybody, for playing, and thanks, Smith Micro, for donating this copy of uh, Manga Studio EX4. So... So, hi Sharon. Uh, hey Sharon. Brandon, can you stick around for the final segment? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. So, Sharon Iverson is here. She is one of the local dons of the comic scene in Ann Arbor. Kiss the ring. Uh, <laughs> we got Dave Carter and Sharon here. It's like it's like uh, the, almost the entire mafia is in town. So, yeah, it's, it's like a summit where we're all going to talk about our territories, but uh, <laughs> So we got some stuff to talk about for Kids Read Comics. We got a lot of things going on this coming uh, July 7th and 8th. Which and is like, what, 
two and a half weeks away. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and I was I was eavesdropping through the door that Brandon's going to be part of the panel of that I need to contact Rob Stensinger very soon to get the details on. But anyway. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't give you that that, that information. Um, no, and, that's and, fine. and and actually, Brandon and and Rob have already uh, gotten together to talk about the panel, right? Yes, we have. Yeah. So and Rob assures me that everything that you said was amazing. So it's going to be a, it's going to oh, be a great it panel. Oh, sounds really cool. Yeah. I need an excuse to stay in there for a while, don't I? <laughs> I think so. I think there's going to be a lot of really great information being dropped in that one. I don't know how we're going to contain it in an hour. Exactly. I think yeah. I, I think we got some wiggle room there though. So anyway, um, but yes. So we got the the, the video game panel with Brandon Dayton. Um, we're going to have uh, Krishna Sadasivan doing a Skype visit to teach us uh, some figure drawing stuff, and then uh, we got a web comics panel at the end with Audrey Ferrici and Scott Yoshinaga. Of Nemu Nemu are going to be doing a panel along with Tony Cliff of DelilahDirk.com and Jason. It's going to be moderated by Jason Elder or Josh Elder of uh, ReadingWithPictures.org. So that's another great one to look out for. Mm -hmm. But we've got an event. Yes, pal. our our secret event. Secret, super yes. secret. So, another so, scoop. So Jersey and I cooked this up a few weeks ago <laughs> over lunch. Um, so we're going to be having a librarian and educator and cartoonist mixer. Uh, this will be Sunday morning, uh, 10.30 to 11.30. So it's kind of right before the actual programming for Sunday starts. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be at the Hatcher Graduate Library on the campus of the beautiful campus of the University of Michigan um, here in Ann Arbor. Um, Short walk from the Ann Arbor District Library, yep, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully a gorgeous walk. It'll, it'll be, it will be a... The weather will be it great will be. that yes. weekend. Our comics dons will make sure of that. That's right. <laughs> um, and so um, it's going to be a very low-key affair. Uh, we're just going to have uh, some refreshments and people and perhaps some talking points uh, yeah. for people to discuss. Uh, but the whole goal of it is just to sort of let librarians and comic cartoonists talk to each other uh, sort of get a feel for each other. Um, our, our plan is to next year uh, develop some actual programming, mm -hmm. uh, library educator related programming for uh, Kids Read Comics. Uh, but we didn't have enough time to put that together this right. year. Um, but but uh, we will, it'll hopefully, as Jersey was saying, it'll hopefully not be like the you know junior high uh, dances that you remember, where the <laughs> librarians are on one side and the cartoonists are on the other side. And they're all afraid <laughs> to talk to each I other. I think I think the topic you guys have been talking about today would just light the fire. Yeah. You think so? Between yeah. edu oh yeah. Okay, Brandon, I'm conscripting yeah. you to show up in the morning, uh, Sunday Sunday morning, uh, July eighth uh, at it, five a.m. Uh, yeah, five a.m. your time, <laughs> and, and we will have a bagel for you. <laughs> we'll we'll show you a picture of a bagel. Uh, yeah. But but we're we're asking people to actually uh, register for this one. Yeah right? yeah. So um, it's uh, all you need to do is go to tinyurl.com slash lc meetup. Yep. And there's a very, very simple form there. We just want your name, your email, and you to check a box or two, depending on whether you're a library educator type or a cartoonist comics type person. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll get a balance of people there. And this is where I want to throw like a little bit closing kind of like statement on this thing and why we're doing this is that I get so many emails nowadays from cartoonists who are like, that is awesome what you guys are doing in Ann Arbor, how, but I'm in Wisconsin, I'm in Wyoming, I'm in you know Saskatchewan, how do I get it started in my area? This is an opportunity to learn how to do that because you're going to be in a room full of librarians and educators. They want to meet you. Right. You want to meet them. This is, we're going to have some breakout discussion kind of sessions where you can sit and, and get to know one another and brainstorm ways to better advocate comics and start something in your neck of the woods, right? Uh, Ann Arbor is the best place in the Midwest for comics, but it doesn't have to be the only place for <laughs> comics. <laughs> it's not a zero-sum game. <laughs> right, that's right. It, 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 right, right. it raises all ships, right? Yep. I mean, the more of us who are doing this kind of stuff, the better. So this is going to be an awesome, awesome opportunity for you guys to do some networking and have some coffee before the show begins on Sunday. And thank you. You, Dave, for all the you know the help that you're providing with this and with the venue and everything. It's my pleasure. Oh gosh, I'm so looking forward to it. So, um, Sharon, mm -hmm. did you have any events that you wanted to talk about for KRC? I, <laughs> I mean, you've mentioned so many of them. Um, I'm really excited about some of the opportunities we'll have in the computer training center with yeah. um, hands-on with uh, flatting with Gail Williams. Yeah. And Janie's gonna Janie Ho is gonna talk about uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, yeah, I, I'm real pumped about Scott Chandler coming. I just, I, I emailed you that. I'm a big fan of the Northwest, um, passage. I've, you've talked about it on the show before, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and I looked on the, after I saw his name posted on, um, 
his website about the two generals, which looks really cool. He's doing, yeah, he's doing yeah. a talk on how to do research for a nonfiction comic. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Is that cool or yeah. what? And yeah. it's totally free. It's totally free. I mean, I don't want to turn this into an infomercial, but it's free. <laughs> it's free. And, and, I, and I hope he brings his um, grandfather's jur- uh, journal or diary. It's this tiny little thing that, you know, people back when with their wonderful handwriting could write, you know, copious notes and stuff into these tiny little spaces. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I'm excited about that, too. Okay, so um, it, so that's at kidsreadcomics.org mm-hmm. and at comics.aadl.org, and it's July 7th and 8th, 2012. And, and uh, actually, Friday night, there's going to be a kickoff event at the library in the multipurpose room. Mm-hmm. Neil Kaplan. Neil, yes. Neil Kaplan. Don't want to miss him. Uh, yeah, yeah, former. He's been on the show before. He is. Uh, he was the voice of Optimus Prime in Transformers Robots in Disguise. He was on uh, Digimon. He played Hawkmon, if, if I'm not mistaken. He was on Power Rangers. He's the voice of uh, characters on uh, StarCraft. Uh, he does an awesome Gilbert Gottfried impersonation. Uh, really, really funny guy. And yeah, he's going to be doing some voice acting workshops for us and some story times. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Super cool. Yeah. So, okay. So that that uh, out of the way, what do you got? What do I got? What do you got? Recommendations? Yes. Book All right. Recommendations. So... I know I got the iPad here. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if that's going to show up on the on the, this you thing. You have to turn it around. Or? Yeah, it's showing up. Oh, okay, perfect. Oh, no. yet. Oh, now it's upside down. Yeah. I think you want it the other. Oh, oh it keeps oh. flipping. Oh man, hang on, the, the, hang on. The, the the orientation lock needs to be on. There we go. So, what do you got on the iPad there? there what am I go. looking at? So, These look like golden age books. So, so, uh, so Matt Howard's stuff is now available digitally on the Comicsology, um, and if. I don't know how familiar you are with Matt Horth. He was um, sort of an underground guy uh, mm-hmm. back in the day. His bug town is sort of his milieu that he was working in. And so now the first seven issues of Savage Henry and the first three issues of the Amazing Post Brothers are now available for like a buck a piece. Can you open one up so I, we can look at the I, art? Yeah. Totally, oh, wow. I'll totally do that. Uh, you got it. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Savage Henry, he was he's one of the characters who sort of came out of his thing, and he's a guitarist, and he's got his ba- he's got his band called the Bull Diggers, I believe. I'm, I'm getting that right. And uh, one of the members of the band is is Cthulhu, uh, the Elder God, who who you know plays plays the drums or whatever <laughs> in, the, in the band, <laughs> and there's and stuff like that, and and they're in it's it's just great stuff, and I'm just so excited that this is now available because. It was like Vortex, I think, was the publisher of the stuff back in the 80s. And, oh, wow. And, you know, good luck finding this anywhere. I was going to say, anywhere yeah. yeah. Kind of thing. And, um, and now you can get it yourself and see what great, it, what great stuff it is. I think uh, Savage Henry is probably good for teens uh, and up. Uh, the Post Brothers stuff is maybe you want to be an adult to read that. It's, it's very, very violent. <laughs> um, but um, it's... Um, I've loved I've loved Matt Howard's stuff, and it's because a lot of his stuff was undergroundy and stuff like that. It's just really hard to get a, get your hands on the stuff to read it, and now yeah. it's just so easy uh, to do so. Oh, the th- so. thank you, future! Right, yes. it brings like this old stuff, uh, out of print stuff. Oh yeah, and rare. You know, I'm I'm surprised they were able to find the original art to even digitize it. Right, so that's awesome. So um, I brought that, and then in my bag. <laughs> Ooh, drum roll. Because <laughs> I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I brought the first issue of Superman Family Adventures. Uh, oh. Which just came out. So um, Art, Art Baltazar and Franco, uh, they were doing Tiny t- Tiny Titans. Tiny for Titans, DC, yep. Uh, which ended, but now they're doing Superman Family Adventures, which has everything I want in a Superman comic in it. Huh. It's got Clark Kent and Lois Lane and, and Perry, o- Perry Olsen. Perry White and Jimmy Olsen and and Crypto and Supergirl and Lex Luthor and Lex Luthor has robots that are attacking Metropolis <laughs> and you know it's part of DC's kids line yeah but this is so much fun it's 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 you know it, it this comic doesn't have a monkey but I'm assured that in issue number four there's a monkey on the cover oh if Titano or Beppo, Beppo don't show up yeah it, exactly yeah um so this is what I want in my Superman comics and so you actually like the Kurt Swan era oh, Superman adventure oh. Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen see that's what I grew oh, up yeah. on oh yeah oh yeah that's that stuff that's is the, the stuff best. it's like oh no Superman's purple what am I, I gonna, gonna do, do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the plot of the episode it's great yeah and um. <laughs> And I want this stuff to be selling yeah. at the rate that DC Comics says people want these kind of Superman stories. You, so, in other words, you want to advocate for these kinds of comics for kids? Because I, that's a segue right. to something. Yeah. 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> because I got... I, I, Dave Roman, who is in the chat, uh, he and I just launched a new show, and it's going to be like a sister show to Comics Are Great. It's got a, so this show is every other Wednesday, the, uh, the uh, alternating Wednesdays. Uh, Dave Roman and I are recording a show, not at the library. It's like not a live show, but it's called Kids Comics Revolution. And uh, it's focusing entirely on comics for kids. And I already talked to Sharon about mm -hmm. this. We wanted to invite some of our librarian friends who are good at doing book talks to send us reviews of stuff that they want more people to read so that we can help spread the word about this kind of stuff. I'd love to have a book talk from you on this book on the show, uh, Dave. If you, I'll, I'll give you the instructions after the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's it. That's it. Uh, the first episode is available at comicsagreat.com slash KCR. O or zero one, or you just go to kids com kids comics revolution dot com. I'm really happy with the way the first episode came together, and now I get to talk with Dave Roman every week, mm -hmm. and uh, life is good. I must have done something really wonderful in a past life. Um, but my my attitude is, if you want to see comics that are like a certain way, you need to buy comics. Yes, very there's, much. There's a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that's something. That, Brandon, we talked about this on the episode uh, "Tale of Two Cities." I think it was episode fifty, if I'm not mistaken, where we were kind of t talking about how, well, if we're unhappy with the way Marvel and DC are handling their superheroes and the way they write their female characters, then don't buy those ones and buy the ones that tell the stories that you like to read because that's what they're listening for is the dollar signs, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's totally true. And you know, I hear Just people. Just a matter of you know, it's a matter of finding that stuff. So. That's that's why I think what what you're doing with Dave is, is such a great project because it, it's really a really great resource for showing people like, hey, here are your al alternatives, you know? Yeah, right. Here's and, where you can go. And so often I'll hear people say, well, I don't want to buy that because it's not the real Superman. It doesn't count. You Whatever. Know? Yeah, it's like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> it's this not it's not canonical Superman. Oh no, yeah, it's like they. they all right. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the Kurt Swan stuff was not in any continuity. It was it was different every. It was like a re. Uh, it was episodic back then, right? right? right. Or, or uh, it was more like the idealized kind of stories we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. And actually, those showcases of the Kurt Swan Superman stories, <sighs> forget about it. They're amazing. Everybody should read them. Anybody who cares about Superman, in my opinion, and and I do. <laughs> <laughs> those are the best ones. So, um, okay, Brandon, I'm going to give you a second to think about if you have any kind of recommended reads, and I'm going to pass it off to Sharon to talk about okay. her recommended reads. Okay, well, um, you gave me a recommended read um, just a week ago. Yeah. No, maybe it was two weeks ago. It was two I apologize. Weeks ago. Yes, I brought you both Give books. Give it back. back. Thank you. I am. I am. <laughs> Delilah Dirk and the Seeds of Good Fortune, which is kind of a continuing saga of um, Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant. Lieutenant yes. Thank you. By Spit Tony, it out. Tony Cliff. Tony Tango Cliff. Charlie. And um, it's it's just a fun. I mean, the whole Delilah Dirk thing is just a fun, amazing thing about this girl, British young woman who is just, uh, I don't know, a soldier of fortune, whatever you want to call her. She does all these amazing things, and she's picked up a sidekick named Selim, and in this particular episode, she is um, off to get a signature from somebody maybe with a little arm twisting involved. And um, she leaves Celine behind at an apple tree who uh, he sends her off with some apples because, you know, it's a little journey into town to deal with this whole signature thing. And so um, the apples play into the story in an unexpected way and, uh, and bring about... Obviously, with Delilah, you know she's going to come through. What <laughs> the one thing that just amazes me is the centerfold of the um, of the book of her <laughs> running like a mad woman all over this town when her zip line doesn't quite oh, get her. Family circus. I know. I was like, it's like family circus meets Indiana Jones. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love her, but I mean, it's like you know, it, just this whole visual is. And I can't imagine how much time this took Tony to make. Um, uh, well, I, I think he's part wizard, so he probably finished it pretty fast. I'm but, sure. But, uh, yeah, you know, what's funny is I just tweeted this this morning, is uh, there's a lot of dust up around the this cover of Catwoman that happened recently. And, and Kate Beaton did some marvelous drawings based on, like, trying to figure out how the, the anatomy worked in that pose. And then some other news came out about a Tomb Raider game, Laura Croft, the character in that game. I guess they're doing something to make her more helpless in the game, so you want to protect her, which is enraging certain groups. Mm. And, I, and, I, and as I was reading all these different stories about, like, you know, people doing 
goof ups with uh, female characters. I thought, thank goodness we got people like Tony who write really interesting, really fun to to watch and and to root for and to cheer strong female characters who are not sexualized or uh, you know playing to any kind of stereotypes from Mad Men or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, Hats off, Tony. You made you made yeah. a great book, and you you've created a classic character that is a great role model for young people too. And the and the settings, well, of, except for the stabbing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but the settings are fabulous too. You yeah. know how he executes like this this town and the roof lines and everything is just fabulous. So, so that's one, and the other one is by a fellow who is going to be at ALA, ALA. that yeah. you get to meet up with if you haven't already. Yeah, I have not met him yet. I'm okay, be tabling next to him. I'm so excited. Gene Yang, who is um, he is the creator of American Born Chinese, has this book out called Level Up, and it's about a young man actually going back to his childhood who is just totally wants to get into video gaming, but um, he is the dutiful son and follows his father's uh, wishes of, well, basically his father says, I'm not going to buy a video game. <laughs> so, And we don't give you um, any allowance, so you can't go play video games until... His father dies uh, young. He's an engineer, and, and he dies, and and that's when this character goes out and buys his first video game. Can we look at some of the sure, insides? Sure, right? sure. And the artwork is done. Um, let me go back to the cover. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to butcher the name. Is it Tien Pham? And the thing that's interesting in the dedication is Gene and Tien talk about um, dedicating this to the, the good brothers and their family who followed in the, the fortune. But um, he wrestles. This is the whole thing of, of following what your parents want you to do. And um, his father wanted him to become a gastroenterologist. <laughs> <laughs> As all and, parents want their children <laughs> to become. <laughs> and it frankly is fascinating. As he uh, wrestles and gets into med school, um, through various, I mean, he kind of gets off into video gaming, but there's these little angels that come along and help help him, guide him, and stay on the, the path. But uh, some of the exams that, in fact, we might be, no, maybe this is the lab session. Oh, <laughs> yes, this is where they're... Um, they're going to examine their fecal matter that <laughs> that took a while for some of them to produce. But anyway, <laughs> um, all conversations eventually degenerate <laughs> to talk about bodily functions. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's a wonderful story and I think a great example of where you don't write, you respect your audience. Um, this mm-hmm. is a teen book, and it's it's to me as an adult reading it, it's like whoa, you know. It, it makes you want to have a conversation and discussion afterwards about, you know, do you follow the wishes of your parents? Do you follow your own um, wishes and desires? You know, what is the right answer um, in the whole thing? So I that's what, you know, drew me to it. And I saw the topic of today's show and I was like, yeah, you know, he mm-hmm. doesn't. I mean, he, in American Born Chinese, he doesn't write down to his audience either. And, you know, I respect that. Well, cool. Well, we lost Brandon. Oh. Uh, at, yeah, he, he he probably ran out of battery juice. We had him on the cell phone for a long time. But this, that was a Gene Luen Yang level up. That'll be in the show yes. notes. Uh, and thank you so much, Sharon. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of book talks that we need for yes. Kids Comics Revolution. Yep. So... Uh, okay, well, then I want to I want to wrap this guy up. I mean, we're running really late, and I know you got places to be. So... Um, I want to thank Brandon Dayton of BrandonDayton.com for the really great topic and awesome discussion. And people should go out and buy his book, Green Monk, which you can get at BrandonDayton.com. Paul Story of uh, Storyville.com. Uh, I think he had to go. Did he? Or is he is no, he here? he's over there. Oh, Matt's going <laughs> to add him into the mix. Hey, Paul, you're in the control room, but... I am still here. But we, we, can't, <laughs> we can't see you, but we can hear you. <laughs> and where's da, Paul? Da. Oh, wow. He's, he's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But thank you, Paul, for lending your voice to this discussion today. That was really it great. It was my pleasure. I love this dis- this particular topic. is is kind of near and dear to my heart. I wish I'd had more time to prepare, but somebody didn't tell me ahead of time what was going on. <laughs> somebody didn't know what the topic was until he emailed or until he posted it online. Okay. Uh, but but anyway, yes. Yeah, so, so for more of Paul's brilliant thoughts, you should come to Kids Read Comics uh, this year, kidsreadcomics.org, and you can meet him in person, talk to him for as long as you want. We've got the man that's hostage all weekend long at the table. He'll be in the Artist Alley on the third floor. So, uh, yes, and if you want to harangue him on Twitter, it's at Storyville on Twitter, yes? S-T-O-R-R-I-E-V-I-L-L-E. Story with an I-E. So, yes, thank you, Paul. And then Dave Carter of, oh, man, I'm going to get it wrong again. I want to make sure I 
get it right of yet another comics blog dot blogspot dot com. Indeed. And Dave reads comics on Twitter, so yes. you can follow Dave to find out what what monkey comic he's reading this week. And you can visit him at the Duderstadt and get some comics. Yes, we've got comics there. So thank you, and, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you at Kids Read Comics too. And then Sharon Iverson. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna miss you most of all, Scarecrow. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here today, Sharon, and for help all the help you're doing with Kids Read Comics. A lot of stuff's going on behind the scenes uh, with you and Aaron Helmrich and Matt Dubay. Uh, I I hope that you guys are still talking to me after the, oh. the weekend. <laughs> We're talking all the way around. <laughs> but uh, but yes, thank you for the book recommendations and for all the help with the show. So and, and Jersey, you're gonna be at ALA this year, right? Oh yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I am going to be at ALA in uh, next week. So uh, that's in Anaheim, California. I'm going to be at a table. I'm going to be tabling an artist alley. I'm going to be right next to Gene Yang, and uh, uh, I'm going to be giving away bookmarks with. Uh, this is for librarians now. Any librarians listening? I'm going to be giving away bookmarks that have a link to a free PDF of my 197-page graphic novel, The Front, and a link to a 61-page packet that teaches that instructs you on how to lead a comics workshop at your school or library, even if you don't know how to draw. Uh, and it's based on wow. con- content that I've been putting together since 2008. Uh, That's for me, then. Yes, yes, actually. <laughs> I, 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 but you could draw. You did I mean, in the Mini Comics Day episode. You demonstrated this. I demonstrated my lack of drawing <laughs> ability, yes. <laughs> but this is something that I hear from a lot of librarians, is that, you know, it's like, well, we need a cartoonist. Well, not necessarily. If you can't afford one, you can lead a comics workshop, even if you are only working in stick figures. So that, that, that's a teaching kit that I put together years ago, or I've been building for the last couple of years, I should say, and that will be a free download as well. But the only way to get it is to come to my table at ALA and get the bookmark. Uh, I don't have them on me. I mailed them out to the to the hotel today. I'll save you one. I'll, I'll send you the link. But anyway, <laughs> but yes, so that, that you can see me, Dave Roman, Raina Telgemeier, and a host of really, really great cartoonists are going to be there. And I'm going to be doing some panels as well, uh, along with Dave. So yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, okay, this episode will be available after the fact at comicsaregreat.com slash CAG58. Is this episode 58? Oh, dear. 59? Okay. 58. The Matt gave oh. me the thumbs up. I thought he was telling me go up one, but he's giving me the thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. So it's CAG58, and then it will be also archived on YouTube, and uh, the video podcast will be available at comics.aadl.org. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening. Uh, and thank you to the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting this show every every two weeks. We'll be back in two weeks uh, with another episode of comicsaregreat.tv. Until next time, I've been Jersey Drozd. Jersey on the Twitter. Okay, bye.